Well, 2022 was many first for us as a nation. At the beginning of last year, unfortunately, some groups with many nefarious agendas managed to piggyback on the people's anger that arose due to inaction by the people who were supposed to govern this country. And those groups used that anger for their benefit. They promised us that the usual way of this country uh, is governed would change. They also promised that uh, corruption would be eradicated in this new system and that accountability would be the rule of the land for the people who govern the nation from that point onwards. Ultimately, all their promises to the nation evaporated just like their worthless lives. In the end, a man who has been wishing and hoping and thinking and praying, planning and dreaming each night of his life for over 50 years got a lottery ticket to be this nation's president. Let's ask the obvious question. The same question I asked a few months back that brought a backlash from the ra radical Neanderthal Colombo liberals. What did the protest in Colombo achieve? Change? A different way of governance? A different political system? At least a different modus operandi? The only thing in my opinion that happened for sure was that the YouTubers who portrayed themselves as activists and the social media fakes who got their advice from the American ambassador in order to get America's agenda in place, now they became richer because they were pumped enough money by those groups who had been carefully watching to destroy Sri Lanka since 2009, from the very first day we won the war. We lost billions of dollars in tourism during that period, the dollars we desperately needed. We lost the confidence of the entire world and were labeled as a nation that does not honor its word. America successfully interfered with our internal politics through the current ambassador, Julie Chung, who acted as uh, Sri Lanka's de facto president when former President Gotabi Rajpaksa was not bothered to govern the country. Everything we said became true. The protests proved to be another scheme to make some people more prosperous and you and me even poorer. 2022 will go down in history as a year where a president who was elected by the highest number of votes and given the two-thirds majority in parliament abandoned his post and wasn't bothered to do his job while spitting on the face of 6.9 million people altogether. It will also be remembered when a new president was appointed through the parliamentary system and not through the public vote. In history books, 2022 will be etched as the year our economy crashed and later the default of Sri Lanka under the guidance of the current governor of the central bank. We also now know we were once again fooled by a new set of people. It was also a year when politicians learned that you will get booted instantly if you don't do your job. All right, that's 2022. What do we have to do in 2023? We got to fix all that. You and I do not have the luxury of jetting off to Wonderland as the Colombo liberals do right now when things don't work here. We have to fix this for the betterment of our lives. Let's forget about the future generation, which is the thing that everybody say we have to do everything for, uh, you know, for our children. Let's at least fix it for us if the future generation has any chance of surviving. The economy will be the dominating factor. Right now, IMF is like the saving grace. However, with the implementation of specific requests by the IMF, things will be bad for you and me in the coming days. You will witness that. We all know that with the economy crashing, our buying power half, meaning that your money doesn't have the same capacity to purchase as how it was. We need to change our economy from an importing one to a manufacturing one. We must learn from countries like China, South Korea, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Singapore, Malaysia. There's no other way. For 75 years, we have been engaging in lavish behavior through borrowings. Basically, Nayatakala Sapatahitia. Now the bill is due. So we got to raise money internally with various methods to ensure we pay those dues. I don't think the current government has any idea how to get us there, especially the economic minds at the top. 
because all of the presented proposals looks a lot like a broken record that has been played in a loop for many years. I see a lot of more of the same rather than change. If the political setup is broken, if the political ideology is faulty, and if the political system is not supporting or working for us, then should we continue to keep hopes in that? Or should we all, as a nation, think differently to get us out of this crisis? Sri Lanka's DNA is as such that we get fooled. From the time of Kuwaiti, we were fooled. When the Portuguese came here uh, to our shows, saying that, you know, they are here to do business and not to colonize, we believed it and later found out that we were fooled. When the Brits came saying they would help to get rid of the Dutch, we were once again fooled. Every single time after an election, like a prayer, we say we were fooled. In this instance, we see various other countries getting closer to us for, the, for their benefit and not to give a damn about us. And sadly again, it looks like we've been fooled. We fool ourselves into believing that they are here to help. At least, let's aim to stop being fooled in the new year. Let's leave the fooling in 2022. Let 2023 be a year of solutions. I will be right back.